today we're going to go over five patterns for the Megaminx and the Gigaminx. Unfortunately, there are no algorithms to create patterns on any of the Minx puzzles. With 12 faces, algorithms would be too long and difficult to memorize. Instead, we are going to learn easy ways to solve the puzzle into patterns. This does mean that if you don't know how to solve the Megaminx, you will need to learn that before watching this video. If you don't know how, just view my page for an easy tutorial and then you can come back to this video. Now when I say that we are going to solve the puzzle into patterns, I mean that we are going to solve it normally, except we're going to modify what the solved state is. For example, here, I just used the beginner's method, except at the beginning, I planned out that this was going to be my solved state. In this video, we are going to specifically be looking at two color patterns that have pieces swapped from two centers. For instance, let's take a look at this side. Now, all of these blue pieces were previously on this blue side, and they have all been moved to the green side. Now, also, all the green pieces have been moved to the blue side. Not all the centers will be directly next to each other. There will be two sets of centers that are directly next to each other, two sets of them that are all the way across the puzzle, and then for the remaining pieces, they will sort of be diagonal around the puzzle. Now you might think that it would just be easier to have all of them top and bottom or all of them next to each other, but you will find that in the way that the corners are built, this will become really difficult and eventually impossible to do. So for the time being, this is the easiest way to do two color patterns. This might seem difficult at first, but once you start putting pieces in, the rest should just come easily. To show you an example of this, I'm going to create that pattern that I featured in the last clip with the dots. Now the first step of the beginner's method would be to get your white cross pieces, but I would like the gray pieces to be on this side. Now you don't have to choose gray just because it's opposite it. You could choose, say, this light blue, but then you'll just have to remember that when you get to the light blue center, you'll have to put white pieces around it. So first off, let's just put the gray pieces around the white center. As you can see, I finished my cross edges and my first layer corners. Now you might be wondering, what centers should I line up these colors with so that I can complete the pattern? Now luckily, since we chose the opposite color to start with, it doesn't matter which centers line up with which color. If I chose, say, red to line up with orange, I'll just have to remember that when I get to the orange center, the red pieces will be around it. Now I can just do my F2L edges that will line up with these corners and then continue up the puzzle as I normally would. If you start running into problems on your last layer, just remember what colors are supposed to be facing up. For instance, here, I'm not looking for gray cross edges, I'm looking for white pieces, because that's the color that corresponds to this side. So I'll just do this, and now my cross edges are facing up. This pattern is an example of switching every single piece for the corresponding centers, but what if we switched only edges? If we solve it again, this time making sure that the corners are in the right position with their centers, but still switching around the edges like they were in that last pattern, then we get the checkerboard pattern for the Megamix. This will be important later. Another pattern that you can now make is the star pattern. You can do this simply by making sure that the edges are in place, but then swapping around the corner pieces. To do the checkerboard on the Gigaminx, of course you could just mess up the whole puzzle and then solve it into the checkerboard, making sure that every single centerpiece is according to checkerboard and that every single edge pairing is as well, but that would probably take more than an hour and for the purposes of this video would be inefficient. So instead, we're going to learn a way that essentially does a Megaminx checkerboard twice to do it on the Gigaminx. First, we are going to act like the outer and inner layers are just one. So for instance, this would be one edge here, red and blue, and this would be one corner here. Now we are going to do a checkerboard pattern using these outer and inner layers. Now that you've completed the checkerboard pattern using the inner and outer layers, we are now going to do the checkerboard pattern again using only outer layers and also using the same color scheme. What this means is that now these individual corner pieces are going to stay where they were, but now these groups of three edges are going to move using our normal swapping pattern. If you're having a difficult time understanding exactly what this means, here's what the cube should look like after you're done with your first side. So notice how this edge makes diagonal lines with the colors of the centerpieces. So this centerpiece is yellow, pink, yellow, so the edge should be pink, yellow, pink. Notice how the corner piece is still in line with the true center pieces. Each side should look like this, with the color of the center making these lines going out, and then also the triangular edges facing up. 
Now that I finished the second layer of the checkerboard pattern, all faces of the cube should now have this double checkerboard pattern. In addition to the double checkerboard pattern for the Gigaminx, there is also a double dot pattern. Once again, we will treat both layers as one layer, but now we will solve the dot pattern. Now that we are finished with the first phase of the dot pattern, we are now going to switch to only outer layer turns and do the dot pattern again. But we're really just moving pieces back to where they were originally. I'll show you what this looks like in a second. Now that we completed the dot pattern on the outer layers, it leaves behind this ring of centerpieces. So we have a dot, a ring, and then another ring. Well, there you go. There's five patterns for the Megaminx and the Gigaminx. If you like these pattern videos, say something in the comment section. I hope this video is helpful to you, and for the future, good luck.